Want to speed up your language learning? Get access to all of our best PDF cheat sheets for free. Just click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Yeah, welcome everyone. It's Medina again. Welcome to Swahili Pod 101. Today, we are going to look at the top 25 phrases in Swahili. Let's have fun. Jumbo. Hello. Okay, the first phrase is Jumbo. Hello. Jumbo. Jumbo is one of the most simple greetings in Kenya. Anyone can use it at any time. In fact, we love using it with tourists. Please visit Kenya and just say Jumbo. Habariza asubui. Good morning. Okay, the next phrase is Habariza asubui. Good morning. Habariza asubui. We often wake up tired sometimes in the morning, but it doesn't cost to say Habariza asubui. Good morning. Habariza mchana. Good afternoon. The next phrase is Habariza mchana. Good afternoon. Habariza mchana. You know, in the afternoon when you meet someone, you're like, oh, Habariza mchana. Habari means news. So you're trying to ask someone, okay, how is your afternoon? Tell me anything that is happening in your afternoon. Usiku mwema. Good night. Usiku mwema. Good night. Usiku mwema. Good night. Yes, it's time to sleep. I th sometimes look forward to that time. And, you know, I, I, I look forward to saying good night to my friends or to my family or to my whatever person who is there. Jina lako nani? What's your name? Jina lako nani? What's your name? Jina lako nani? It's an obvious question whenever we meet with people, especially when you want to know who they are. It's polite to know someone's name, right? Do you like being called by your name? Yeah, that's why this phrase is very important. Jina lako nani? Mimi naitwa. I'm Mimi naitwa Medina. My name is Medina. Mimi naitwa Medina. Now, this is actually an answer to the previous question, Jina Lako Nani, what's your name? Now, you have to keep this in mind that, you know, if you use this word frequently, you'll be able to tell people about your name. You'll be able to tell people your name. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. Nina furaha kukutana na wewe. Nice to meet you. I mean, it's really polite. I always feel like energized when someone says, nice to meet you. <laughs> it can be awkward when someone says, oh, I do not want to meet you, you know, <laughs> but we rarely hear that. Just use that word, nice to meet you. Habarigani, how are you? Habarigani, how are you? Habari in Swahili means news. And gani means what? So what news? Actually, what you're trying to ask here is like, what, what do you have? I mean, what is all about your life right now in a polite way, you know? Then someone will say, Mzuri, or it's okay. They will not go on telling you whatever is happening all around, but, you know, they'll just say it's fine or not good, you know? So it's an important phrase. Niko salama, asante, nawewe. I am fine, thanks. And you? Niko salama, asante. Fine, thanks. And you? Niko salama asante means, oh, I'm fine. Literally, that is what it means. I'm fine, thank you. Then you, you take it back. What about you? You are concerned about the person who is asking you, you know? If you just say, oh, I'm fine, thanks, then you keep quiet, you know? I mean, we do some, that sometimes, but you know, sometimes you want to show concern, so you ask. Nawewe, and you? Tafadhali, please. Tafadhali, please. It's a magic word all around the world. So tafadhali is one of those words that you want to embrace when you visit Kenya. Tafadhali, whenever you're asking a favor, just say tafadhali. Excuse me, tafadhali, tafadhali. That's one great word you need to remember. Asante, thank you. Asante, thank you. It's also one of the magic words that relates to tafadhali, please. You know, asante, it's like you're appreciating whatever favor you received from someone who did you a favor. So it's also one of those words you, you like to embrace whenever and wherever. Karibu. 
you're welcome. Karibu, you're welcome. Karibu. Karibu is one of the most common words used in Kenya. For example, when someone knocks your door, you'll say, oh, karibu. That means come in or welcome, actually. Then in some circumstance when someone gives you something, you'll say thank you, right? Now the person who is giving you will say karibu. Karibu means welcome. So <laughs> it can be a joke, but you know what? You can go and ask the or you can go and ask as many favors as, as you can because they said karibu. I mean that's a joke. <laughs> you don't have to take it seriously though. <laughs> Dio. Yes. Dio. Yes. Dio. Dio is a response. Whenever someone asks a question, you can say Dio if it's a positive answer, I mean, to the question. I mean, it, it depends. You know, there are the yes, no questions. Yeah, that is where it lies. Dio. Umefika Kenya? Dio. Umekula chakula? Dio. Umefika Kenya means, have you arrived in Kenya? You'll say yes, which is Dio. Have you eaten food? Umekula chakula? You'll say Dio. Yes. Hapana. No. Hapana. No. Hapana. Hapana is an answer to the yes, no question. Just like Dio. Dio means yes, as we looked at it previously. Now here it's no. Umefika Kenya? Hapana. Have you arrived in Kenya? No. Umekula chakula? Have you eaten food? No. Hapana. Sawa. Okay. Sawa, okay. Sawa, okay. Sawa. Sawa is used to acknowledge that you agree to whatever has been said. For example, you can say, Sawa, nimelewa maelezo yako. Okay, I've understood the explanation. Niwe radhi, excuse me. Niwe radhi, excuse me. Niwe radhi. This is a very handy word, especially when you want someone to excuse you for something. Niwe radhi. Naweza angalia mzigo wako? Excuse me, can I check your bag? Samahani. I am sorry. Samahani. I am sorry. Samahani. Samahani is also one of those polite words that you really need to remember. It comes handy when you make a mistake. Samahani nimechelewa. I'm very sorry that I'm late. Nisangapi. What time is it? Nisangapi. What time is it? Nisangapi. Of course, you'll want to know time. If you cannot see, see the time, probably there's no wall clock around, or perhaps your phone is off the check, or perhaps you forgot your wristwatch. You'll ask your friend, Nisangapi. Msala niwapi. Where is the restroom? Msalani ni wapi? Where is the restroom? Msalani ni wapi? Now, for real, you may need this word really, especially if nature keeps calling on you, you know? You may want to ask, hey, tafadhali, msalani ni wapi? Excuse me, where is the restroom? Subiri kidogo. Wait a moment. Subiri kidogo. Wait a moment. Subiri kidogo. When you're caught up doing something, and someone asks for a favor, you may use this word. Just a moment. Subiri kidogo. Beyahini nini. How much is this? Beyahini nini. How much is this? Beyahini nini. How much is this? Beyahi nini. Now, he there stands for the thing that you want to buy. For example, you can say, Beyahi nguo nini. How much is this dress? Saidia, help. Saidia, help. Saidia, Saidia. Imagine you're drowning. What will you do? You'll shout, Saidia, help. When you're in trouble, I mean, this word comes in handy. I think you may want to use it. Tuonane badai. See you later. Tuonane badai. See you later. Tuonane. Badai. After you meet with your friend, you have a chat with her or him, you'll definitely say, bye, see you later, when you're padding. I think it's also in one of those polite words that you may want to add to your list. Kwaheri. Goodbye. Kwaheri. 
Goodbye. Kwa heri, goodbye. Kwa heri. Now, kwa heri reminds me of those toughest moments in my life. You know, when I went abroad to study and my family was back um, in my country, the toughest moments was when we were parting. You know, I will never want to say kwa heri. I will never want to say goodbye. I will never even want to utter it out, but I will just say it with tears rolling down my my cheeks. Yeah, kwa heri. It's a good word to use whenever you're padding. Sijui, I don't know. Sijui, I don't know. Sijui. This is a word that you'll, you, you'll use when you acknowledge that for sure you're not sure about the answer to the question or to the situation that is happening at the moment. Some people think it's impolite to say sijui, especially when you're asking for directions. They'll try to give you information which might be wrong to show that they are polite. So you got to be careful. Thank you so much for staying with us until the end of this video. Did you enjoy this video? If you did, do not forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to visit swahilipod101.com. Kwaheri, see you again. Yes, it's Medina again. Welcome to Swahili Pod 101. This is Topwords. Today, we're going to look at the top 25 verbs in Swahili. Welcome. Kua, to be. The first verb is kua, to be. Kua. For example, we can say, Ili kukua katibu mwema, inabidi ujue kuratibu. In order to be a good secretary, you have to be good at organizing. Kupenda, to like. Kupenda, to like. Kupenda. Bila shaka na kupenda. Of course, I like you. That's quite a handy word to use. Kufanya, to do. Kufanya, to do. Kufanya mazoezi kutakusaidia kupoteza uzido. Doing exercises will help you lose weight. Kusema, to say. Kusema, to say. Nilimfunza mtoto wangu kusema karibu, anapuambiwa asante. Nilimfunza mtoto wangu kusema karibu, anapuambiwa asante. I taught my toddler to say, you're welcome, when he's told thanks. Kueleza, to explain. Kueleza, to explain. We can say, ubao meupe, Ndilo chombo nzuri cha kueleza kitu cha picha. A whiteboard is a perfect means to explain something visually. Ubao mweupe ndilo chombo nzuri cha kueleza kitu cha picha. Kusikia, to hear. Kusikia, to hear. Kusikia. Kifaru, anahisia ya hali ya juu 
ya kusikia na kunusa. Kifaru ana hisia ya hali ya juu ya kusikia na kunusa. The rhino has a good sense of hearing and smelling. Kwenda to go. Kwenda to go. Kwenda. Nataka kwenda dukani. I want to go to the shop. Nataka kwenda dukani. Kujua to know. Kujua to know. Kujua. Pia mimi nafurahia kukujua. Me too. I'm happy to know you. Pia mimi nafurahia kukujua. Kuchukua to take. Kuchukua to take. Kuchukua. Usisahau kuchukua picha yangu tafadhali. Don't forget to take my picture. Usisahau kuchukua picha yangu tafadhali. Kuona to see. Kuona to see. Kuona. Kwa heri ya kuonana. Bye. See you again. Kwa heri ya kuonana. Kuja to come. Kuja to come. Kuja. Ikiwezekana, nigelipenda kuja kesho tena. If possible, I would like to come back tomorrow. Ikiwezekana, nigelipenda kuja kesho tena. Kufikiria to think. Kufikiria to think. Kufikiria. Fikiria unachotaka. Unipe jibu kesho. Think about what you want and give me the answer by tomorrow. Fikiria unachotaka. Unipe jibu kesho. Kuangalia to look. Kuangalia to look. Kuangalia. Hangeweza kusita. Kuangalia kwenye sinema. She couldn't stop looking at the screen. Hangeweza kusita kuangalia kwenye sinema. Kutaka to want. Kutaka to want. Ninataka kwenda kulala mapema leo. I want to go to sleep early today. Ninataka kwenda kulala mapema leo. Kupea to give. Kupeana to give. Hawakupeana ya kutosha. They didn't give enough. Hawakupeana ya kutosha. Kutumia to use. Kutumia to use. Ni line gani ninayopaswa kutumia? Which line am I supposed to use? Ni line gani ninayopaswa kutumia? Kutafuta to find. Kutafuta to find. Usipoteze wakati wako kutafuta kazi ya hali ya juu. Anza tu kufanya kazi. Don't waste time looking for the ultimate job. Just start working. Usipoteze wakati wako kutafuta kazi ya hali ya juu. Anza tu kufanya kazi. Kwenda nje to go out. Kwenda nje to go out. Kwa hakika tunahofia. Lakini hauwezi enda nje leo usiku. We are really sorry, but you cannot go out tonight. Kwa hakika tunahofia, lakini hauwezi kwenda nje leo usiku. Kuuliza to ask. Kuuliza to ask. Nitakuuliza mara nyingine moja. I will only ask you one more time. Nitakuuliza mara nyingine moja. Kufanya kazi to work. Kufanya kazi to work. Naomba unisaidie kufanya kazi hii. I request that you help me do this work. Naomba unisaidie kufanya kazi hii. Kuingia to enter. Kuingia, to enter. Hauwezi kuingia bila kibali. You cannot enter without permission. Hauwezi kuingia bila kibali. Kuhisi, to feel. 
kuhisi to feel kuhisi na hisi vizuri i feel good na hisi vizuri kujaribu to try kujaribu to try kujaribu ningelipenda kuchagua kitu ambacho sijawahi kujaribu I would like to try something I've never tried before. Ningelipenda kuchagua kitu ambacho sijawahi kujaribu. Kuondoka to leave. Kuondoka to leave. Kuondoka. Watu huzoea kuondoka nyumbani na kwenda kazini wakati wajua kupaa. People usually leave home for work at sunrise. Watu huzoea kuondoka nyumbani na kwenda kazini wakati wajua kupaa. Kuita to call. Kuita to call. Kuita. Nitakuita papo nitapofika nyumbani. I will call once I arrive home. Nitakuita papo nitapofika nyumbani. Thank you so much for staying with us until the end of this video. How was it? If you liked it, please, we'd like to hear your comments. And don't forget to visit swahilipod101.com for more lessons. See you then. Bye. Kwaheri. It's Medina again. Welcome to Swahili Pod 101, Swahili Topwards. Today, we are going to look at 10 questions you should know. Welcome and have fun. Jina lako ni nani? Jina lako ni nani? What's your name? To answer that, you'll say, Jina langu ni Medina. If you're Juma, you'll say, Jina langu ni Juma. My name is Juma. Uhali gani? Uhali gani? How are you? To answer that, you'll say, Jema, I'm fine. Or fine? Uhali gani fine? I'm fine. Ulizaliwa wapi? Ulizaliwa wapi? Where are you from? To answer that, I'll give the name of my country. Kenya. Ulizaliwa wapi? Kenya. If you're born in the United States, you'll say, America. Ulizaliwa wapi? America. Siku yako ya kuzaliwa ni lini? Siku yako ya kuzaliwa ni lini? When is your birthday? To answer that, you'll say, Siku yangu ya kuzaliwa ni Aprili tarehe tatu. My birthday is April 3rd. Unaishi wapi? Unaishi wapi? Where do you live? Ninaishi Nairobi. I live in Nairobi. Nairobi is quite a big place. Actually, it's a province in itself. So you won't say you're living in the whole Nairobi. We have to be specific. So if you live in Langata, you will say Ninaishi Langata. That is when we will assume you're in Nairobi and you're talking within people in Nairobi. They'll understand where Langata is. But if you're out of Nairobi, you'll say, Naishi Nairobi Langata, to just be specific. Unafanya kazi wapi? Unafanya kazi wapi? Where do you work? To answer this, you'll say, Jijini Mombasa. Again, Jijini Mombasa. Mombasa is the name of the place. Jijini means town. So if you're working in Kisumu, you'll say Jijini Kisumu, just to be specific. I work in Mombasa. I work in Kisumu. Ulijifunza wapi Kiswahili? Ulijifunza wapi Kiswahili? Where did you learn Swahili? For that, you can answer by saying katika swahilipod101.com from swahilipod101.com Jay, unapenda chakula cha Kenya? 
Je, unapenda chakula cha Kenya? Do you like Kenyan food? To answer that, you will say, ndio napenda. Yes, I love it. Yes, I like Kenyan food. In Kenya, we have varieties of food, and I'm sure you'll like it. The most staple food in Kenya is ugali. Ugali, ugali is like cornbread. It's made from white flour, white corn flour. It's not very hard. Something like rice, but you know, in the flour form, but cooked. You don't eat the flour, it's cooked. So it's cornbread. Now you eat cornbread with different kinds of stews. You can eat it with a bean stew, beef stew, name any kind of stew. And then we also have vegetables. I'm sure you'll like it. Try it out. Umeshawaikuwa Kenya. Umeshawaikuwa Kenya. Have you been to Kenya? You can answer this by saying, Hapana, ni marayangu ya kwanza. No, it's my first time. This is a very common question to tourists who visit Kenya. So, be prepared. And it will really sound cool if you can answer in Swahili. Hapana, ni marayangu ya kwanza. He unauza pesangapi? He unauza pesangapi? How much is this? To answer that, you can say, shilingi kumi za Kenya. Kumi is the price. So, you can keep changing that and say, shilingi hamsini za Kenya. 50 shillings, Kenya shillings. This will be a very useful phrase to use when you're going shopping. Of course, I'm sure you're going to buy souvenirs for your family members back in your country. So having this word on your fingertips will be very useful. Yeah, we're done! Thank you so much for keeping up with me until the end of this lesson. Do you remember all those questions? They're very handy and I really recommend that you have them at your fingertips whenever you visit Kenya. Now, if you liked our lesson, do not forget to give us a thumbs up down there and leave your comments. And don't forget to visit swahilipod101.com for more lesson. See you next time. Kwa heri tuonane. Bye. Yes, welcome again. This is Medina. Welcome to Swahili Pod 101. Top words. Today we are going to look at 10 hardest words to pronounce in Swahili. Badai, later. Badai, later. Badai. For example, you can say, Tuonane badai. See you later. Tu onane baadai. Now, actually, I can understand why it's a little bit difficult word to pronounce because uh, looking back at my nephew, he was at that time around two or three years old. He had a very hard time saying baadai. He used to say badea, badea, which is quite different. But now he made it up. He's okay. He says baadai. Changia to contribute. Changia to contribute. Changia. Changia katika mikakati ya mambo maku. To contribute to a greater cause. Changia katika mikakati ya mambo maku. Hakuna matata. No worries. Hakuna matata. No worries. Hakuna matata. Hapa Kenya, hakuna matata. There are no worries here in Kenya. Actually, there's a song that goes, Kenya inchi yetu, hakuna matata. Nchi ya kupendeza, hakuna matata. That means that in our country, there are no worries. It's a lovable country. There are no worries. Yeah, hakuna matata is quite a handy word to use. Actually, it's in a song. So just learn the song and you get the word. If you're a fan of Lion King movie, I'm sure you've heard about this phrase. Kiangazi, hot season. Kiangazi, hot season. Kiangazi. Kuna kiangazi sana kaskazini mwanchi. The north part of the country is very dry. Kuna kiangazi sana kaskazini mwanchi. Kipupwe, cool season. Kipupwe, cool season. Ki pupwe. 
watu hupata homa wakati wa kipupwe. People catch flu during the cool season. Watu hupata homa wakati wa kipupwe. Mchungwa, orange tree. Mchungwa, orange tree. Mchungwa. Nimelala hapa chini ya mti wa mchungwa. I am lying here under an orange tree. Nimelala hapa chini ya mti wa mchungwa. Ngangana to strive. Ngangana to strive. Ngangana. Nangangana kuwa wa kwanza. I'm striving to be the first one. Ngangana. Can you try saying it out? Nga, nga, na. Do you realize that you stick your tongue at the back upper part of your mouth and then the voice comes through your nose? Nga, nga, na. Hope you did it. Ngombe, cow. Ngombe, cow. Ngombe. Hawa ni ngombe wawili. Hawa ni ngombe wawili. These are two cows. Ngombe is similar like ngang, ngana. I mean, the way you stick the tongue behind and to the top of your mouth. But now you're using the o sound. You're trying to make the o sound. Try it again. Ngo, ngo, ngombe. Hope you made it. Taka, taka, trash. Taka, taka, trash. Taka, taka. Kutupa taka, taka. To empty the trash. Kutupa taka, taka. Now, taka, taka can be used in different ways. For example, if someone says taka, taka, it will mean something really bad or wasteful or something that is annoying. If someone says wewe ni taka, taka, it means you're wasteful or you're a waste. So you can use it different ways. But you know what? Don't use it to your friend or someone. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it's not a good word to use, in other words. So be careful when you use it. Nyanyasa, oppress. Nyanyasa, oppress. Nyanyasa. Matajiri wana nyanyasa maskini. The rich oppress the poor. Matajiri maskini. Thank you so much for staying with us until the end of this video. Was it a long way to learn the top hardest word to pronounce in Swahili? Did you get it right to say ngangana and ngombe? If you did, and if you liked our videos, we'd like to hear your comments in the comment section. And please, don't forget to visit our website, swahilipod101.com, for more lessons. See you. Bye. Kwaheri. Yes. Welcome to Swahili Pod 101. Again, it's Medina with you. Now, today we are going to do something really special. We are going to talk about 10 words you never want to hear. No, don't say this on my ears. You know, something like that. Do you have that experience? Now, follow me and let's have fun. J, umeongeza uzito hivi karibuni? J, umeongeza uzito hivi karibuni? Have you gained weight recently? Actually, in Kenya, adding weight is not really a big issue because people think the bigger you are in mass, <laughs> the wealthier you are, or the richer you are. So there's nothing really bad about adding weight when you compare it with other countries like probably Japan or the States, where you may get hard when someone talks about your weight. So feel free in Kenya. The only problem comes in when you're really cutting weight. <laughs> so it's the opposite. If you're really cutting weight, yeah, people will be asking you, oh, what's happening, you know? What, what's happening? Don't you have food? Or are you stressed? So there are those kind of cultural differences. Una nyuele ya rangi jivu. Una nyuele ya rangi jivu. You have gray hair. 
you know, you know, people have a difficult time accepting the fact that they are growing old. Yet it's a paradox of life, right? You're celebrating your birthday, but at the same time you're growing old. Now, when you're growing old, it, it reaches a point when you're growing gray hair, right? And it's it's evident. You cannot hide it unless you're coloring your hair. Now, in, in Kenya, really, you don't want to tell someone that they're growing gray hair. You better say it with your friends about somebody. But, you know, that will be gossiping. So I don't really recommend it. But uh, usually, you see the gray hair and keep it inside your heart. You appreciate the fact that, yeah, someone is growing and you keep it at that. Nilikweleza hivyo. Nilikweleza hivyo. I told you so. Actually, when you say it naturally, it comes out in a kind of arrogant way. Let's try it in Swahili. Nilikweleza hivyo. I told you so, you know. This is someone who kind of warned you beforehand that uh, do not go that way. Then unfortunately, I mean, at that time it's not really unfortunate, but you know, you did it and then there are those kind of consequences or circumstances, I mean, things that happen that are not really good. Then you come back and, you know, your friend who warned you says on your face, I told you so. You don't want to hear that at that moment, especially when things have gone bad, you know. Umefutwa kazi. Umefutwa kazi. You're fired. You know, this phrase, when someone is firing you, sometimes they say it in a polite way, right? Umefutwa kazi. Not to make you feel like, okay, oh, the world is ending. But there are those ones who come literally and say, umefutwa kazi. You know what I mean? Like, you're fired. Like, literally. It's like, fire is coming on its way right there and then, and you feel like hell is burning loose. But, but you know what? It's, it's one phrase that we do not really want to hear, and neither do we want to tell. Imagine someone is fired. I mean, I have friends who have been fired, and they will never want to tell. You'll just see by yourself. You'll not see them get, getting out of the house, and you're like, oh, what happened? You don't even want to go ask, you know? You're afraid. So you ask the neighbors. You hear from the neighbors that, oh, I'm a futu akazi, which is kind of very sad. It's not a phrase that you want to hear. Not from your good friend either, right? Sio wewe ni mimi. Sio wewe ni mimi. It's not you. It's me. You know, this is one of the common phrases we hear when people are breaking up. Usually someone says this to take responsibility of the situation, like the breaking up. It sounds like polite, but it's like a cliche nowadays and it's not a fun word to say. Sio wewe ni mimi. Hope you never meet this word. <laughs> I wish you luck. Asante kwa wasifu wako. Hata hivyo, nafasi hiyo ishachukuliwa. Asante kwa wasifu wako. Hata hivyo, nafasi hiyo ishachukuliwa. Thank you for your resume. However, the position has been filled. Okay, let us imagine your... your looking for a job like yes seriously and uh, and honestly this is seriously in kenya because we have a pool of undergraduates who are looking for jobs every day you know you actually advertise for one position like this and you find like more than 1000 applicants you're like okay okay well, how 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 should i prove myself to be smart and you know it's not like you've applied for one job you've applied for quite a number of jobs and this is the same message they send you. It's quite frustrating. You don't want to hear it. Anyway, if you're someone looking for a job, I am praying for you. Do not give up though. Keep going, keep fighting. That's what we were meant for. Tuwaone watu wengine. Tuwaone watu wengine. We shall see other people. Now, this is a sad phrase in itself. Already, like, it's an explanation in itself. Someone is breaking up with you, and with that arrogance, like, oh, let's go see other people, you know? It's like he already has many other options. <laughs> Probably you're just one of them, and you're like, oh, he's giving up on you to try the other options. It's quite sad, though, right? It's quite sad. And, like previously, I hope this never comes your way. But the bright side is, 
you may end up getting someone who will treat you better than the person who has left you. So never give up hope. Sina pesa yako leo. Sina pesa yako leo. I don't have your money today. <laughs> okay, I, I'm, I'm laughing, but it, it's quite serious. And it's quite a common phrase I hear quite from a lot of my friends. You know, when you're, borrowing, when you're lending money, you should lend the amount you know you're willing to lose. <laughs> That's what my mother tells me every time. Because, yeah, you lend this money and you go asking for it. And the person says, I don't have your money today. And, you know, you go back tomorrow and it's another today. So those two days sometimes never come to an end. So whenever you're lending money, just be careful. Be careful how much you're lending and to who. Once beaten, twice shy. So if you're lending money to the same person who says that I don't have my, your money today, huh? You, you have to think again. I wish you luck in this. In a password to onge. In a password to onge. We need to talk. For me, for me, this is one of the phrases that are for real. I, I never want to hear. And when, I, when it gets into my ears, I'm like, oh, this trouble. I get so tensed up. I get so uncomfortable. And I just want to get out of it. I want to ask the person, okay, let's do it now so that we end it right now. I don't know about you. Please tell us your feelings at the comment sections later. We'd like to hear what you say. Nataka sikuza kumzika toka kazini. Nataka siku za kupumzika kutoka kazini. I want days off. Now, this is one of the words you don't want to hear when it's busy in the office. <laughs> you know, it makes you imagine like, oh, why, are you, why do you want days off when it's actually peak time, you know? We have so many clients coming in, then you want days off. Are you running away from work? You know, I think you, you may relate to this if you are in a busy I mean, work area, you're a manager or something like that, you know. It's one word you never want to hear. Yes, we have come to the end of 10 phrases you never want to hear. Yes, I totally agree. Some of these ones, seriously, I never want to hear. If I know it's coming, I literally run away. Yes, like I'm, I'm avoiding that person, you know. You know what I mean? You could relate to me and we would like to hear from you. Please write your comments down there and give us more examples of some of the phrases you never want to hear. And please do not forget to subscribe and visit our website, swahilipod101.com. See you, Kwaheri! You have a gray hair. Oh, when you're growing old kind of thingy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute when I think of it. Samahani Nilisa how yeah, this is a teacher. This is a student to a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which other places this will apply. Okay. Well okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny. You know, it makes me remember yeah. things that I've never thought about. Welcome. Hello, everyone. It's Medina here again with Swahili Top Words. Are you a gift lover? Do you like receiving gifts or do you like giving gifts? Now, if that is you, this lesson is really for you. We're going to learn about 10 gift ideas you must know in Swahili. Welcome and let's have fun. Okay, words. Tarakilishi la paja. Tarakilishi la paja. Our first word is tarakilishi la paja, laptop. Tarakilishi la paja. Paja is your lap, laptop. Asante kwa kunipa tarakilishi la paja. Asante kwa kunipa tarakilishi la paja. Thank you for giving me a laptop. Really, I appreciate it. I was dreaming of laptops some years back. You know, technology is changing each each, each and every day. And it is, it's really, I'm not really sure, but um, it was yesterday while I was thinking about 
how the world will be in in 40 years to come. I don't know. Maybe there's some. There'll be something different from a laptop. Okay, now let's get back um, to where I was about laptop. You know, those days when I used to see people with laptops, I was like, oh, oh, I really wish I could have one. Thank you for giving me a laptop. Actually, I got one, and <laughs> life has become normal again. I think I want more laptops. It never gets enough. I don't know what. Do you feel something like me? Kitabu, kitabu. Book, kitabu, book. Ningependa kusoma kitabu cha hadithi. Ningependa kusoma kitabu cha hadithi. I would like to read a storybook. Kenyans love stories and storytelling. Even before books were invented, Kenyans told stories. And now they're telling stories in writings. We have very famous and popular writers in Kenya. I think of it. Among of among them include, uh, who is this? Gugi Thiongo, and one of his books that I like the most is Weep Not Child. Then there's Grace of Grace of God, and Grace, with Grace of God you 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 learn. I mean, she's gotten into the Kenyan culture, and you'll get to know much about the Kenyan culture through her books. The Promised Land is one of those favorite books that I love. There's Binyavanga Hainaina, the name is quite long, but you know what? He's a good writer. In fact, he's, he has a very unique writing that even impressed Oprah Winfrey, who took it as one of his book clubs to read books. Get to know the Kenyan cultures by checking out these writers and more of them. Ramani Yadunia. Ramani Yadunia. Wild Map. Ramani ya dunia world map. Kwa vile unasafiri dunia, shika hii ramani ya dunia. Kwa vile unasafiri dunia, shika hii ramani ya dunia. Since you're traveling around the world, have this world map. Would you like to have a world map as a gift? Which one would you like best? The poster one or the globe? Globe in Swahili is called Ardhi. Ardhi technically means earth because the world is earth. Swahili just took it to translate globe to earth. Ardhi. Camera. 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 Camera he inatoa picha safi kabisa. Camera he inatoa picha safi kabisa. This camera produces clear pictures. Yeah, if you see me clearly, then I just mean it. Simu ya smartphone. Simu ya smartphone. Smartphone. Simu ya smartphone. Smartphone. He simu ya smartphone. Haishi moto haraka. He simu ya smartphone haishi moto haraka. This smartphone does not finish charging quickly. Maybe it's time to get a gift as a smartphone. How so cool would that be? You know, before I got a smartphone, I dreamt. I know it was <laughs> one of those dreams that you want come true and honestly when I got one it was a dream come true and I appreciate it up to now it wasn't really a gift but I really worked hard to get it <laughs> because I wanted it yes it is it is very convenient I would say smartphones are super convenient especially in this world and age I can use smartphone in fact when I was at school I used to write my papers using my smartphone sounds strange but it's true Whatever I will be going to work, I could write my papers. Woo! Part-time jobbing. Yeah, with papers on the road. Woo! I'll write lots of papers. I'll do my research using my smartphone. I mean, the, it's like the world was with me right on my hands. And, you know, I could chat with my family. I could do, you know, you jungle through a number of things at the same time. And your world is just, everything is consolidated. That is very convenient. I appreciate it. It's a dream come true and it's a worthy dream. Worthy dream. 
It's a high time you get one as a gift. Yeah, I wish you luck. Kamusi. Kamusi. Dictionary. Kamusi. Dictionary. Kamusi mpia ni pesangapi. Kamusi mpia ni pesangapi. How much is a new dictionary? Do you think a dictionary is a good gift? Now you ask me, what kind of a dictionary? It could be book dictionary or electronic dictionary. But which one would you like most? Electronic dictionary or book dictionary? Or none at all? You know, I'm saying none at all because some people think dictionaries, especially book dictionaries, are outdated. Why? Because they have their phones as an extra memory. <laughs> you just, you want to look for something like, you can say, I want to look for camera. Oh, you go to your phone, you type it, camera, and it comes with all those things. So someone like, oh, I don't need a dictionary. My phone already has a dictionary. I mean, really, for me, I still like, like dictionaries, and especially those paper ones, you know, they're all jet, Theoceras, the dictionary, the Oxford English Dictionary. I mean, they, those ones are still on my shelf and I, I'll value them forever. I, I think I, I really love them. I still use them up to now in as much as I have a phone and a computer and Google as an extra, an extra gadget for my memory, you know? Usafiri Wandege Hadi Kenya. Usafiri Wandege Hadi Kenya. A flight to Kenya. Usafiri wa ndege hadi Kenya. A flight to Kenya. Nitakupea tiketi ya usafiri wa ndege hadi Kenya. Nitakupea tiketi ya usafiri wa ndege hadi Kenya. I will give you a flight ticket to Kenya. How awesome is that gift? Especially if you are abroad. Honestly, you want to go meet your friends. If the flight ticket is, is ranging to like... $1,500. I mean, that's a lot of money. And if someone gives you that as a gift, really, that is awesome. Don't you think so? Vocha ya ununuzi. Vocha ya ununuzi. Shopping voucher. Vocha ya ununuzi. Shopping voucher. Katika kampuni yetu, kila mtu alipea vocha ya ununuzi. Katika kampuni yetu, kila mtu alipewa vocha ya ununuzi. In our company, everyone was given a shopping voucher. You could be one of those lucky ones to get a, a voucher, a shopping voucher from your company. Now, which one would you prefer to buy? Electronic stuff or fashion stuff? Or go, I mean, a shopping voucher will not take you for a picnic. But you can buy stuff to use for a picnic, right? It's you to choose. I wish you luck and enjoy, enjoy those vouchers in case you, you get them. Use them. Well, and if you have a friend, please try and get a gift for that friend, you know? Saya mkono. Saya mkono. Wristwatch. Saya mkono. Wristwatch. Ile saya mkono ya blue ni maridadi sana. Ile saya mkono ya blue ni maridadi sana. That wristwatch is very beautiful. But the wristwatches are quite good. They, they short time and you don't have to go checking your phone every time. Like, what time is it? You know, you just make it easier. You bring your hand here and you see, you don't even have to bring it there. You just a little bit like that. And you, you, you see, you know, you see the time and you're acquainted with whatever is happening as far as time is concerned. Now, do you think it's necessary to have a wristwatch? Mkoba. Mkoba. Wallet. Mkoba, wallet. Mkoba ni zawadi nzuri sana. Mkoba ni zawadi mzuri sana. A wallet is a good gift. Where is my wallet? I love wallets myself, so whenever I think of buying something for, for someone, especially ladies, I give them wallets. And I really go look for those pretty ones. And those ones that I know. You know, I know my friends, so I know... I know their style. I know whatever thing they like putting in their wallets. You know, those lady, lady, gully thingy in the wallet? Yeah, in the wallet or 
buying the handbag, whatever the thing is. But what I'm trying to say is that wallets are really good gifts. And I don't know about you. Do you wish to have a wallet or just a handbag is enough? Or for men, what do you like? Let us know in the comment section. Thank you again for staying with us throughout this lesson. It was fun to learn about the 10 gift ideas you must know in Swahili. Right. We'd like to hear more from you in the comment section. Just type something about the kind of gifts you like, the kind of gifts that you will never want to have. And then don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And please get time and learn more Swahili from SwahiliPod101.com. See you then in our next lesson. Bye bye. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and ebooks for free. Just click the link in the description.